it would help if I turned my microphone on. Good evening, everybody. It's Andy from Snow Camps Europe with this week's Sunday Ski Cast Christmas special. Hence the reason I'm dressed up as Santa Claus. So tonight we've got several different guests for you who we've brought back from the previous shows who are here to answer your questions. And I'm going to bring them on in just a second. But as always, if you are watching on Facebook, then please do feel free to host a watch party by clicking a watch party button underneath this post. And don't forget to like, share, and comment. You can ask your questions in the comments if you want to ask any of the guests a question. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, please don't forget to press the um, subscribe button. Also, like the video and ask your questions in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. So I'm going to bring everybody in. So the first person in is our Olympic Austrian mogul skier, Melanie. Hello, Melanie. Hello. Hello. And then Dave Burroughs from Snow Pros in Switzerland. Hello, Dave. Hey, how's it going? All good. One of our boot fitters from right at the beginning, Colin Martin from Solutions for Feet. Hello, Colin. Hey, guys. And uh, we got Phil Brown from the NSSA. How are you doing, Phil? Eve. Evening, everyone. Evening. Phil is joining us from Italy. And then we've got Matt Bramall, our holiday rep. Here he is. Hello, Matt. Hello, everyone. Next one up is the one and only Fabian Steeple, boot fitter from Caprun. Hello, Fabi. Good evening. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and then to keep us all entertained, we've got our musician from the off piece bar, Martin, who I think is going to start us off with a little tune. Once we can see him. <laughs> Martin, are you there? Yeah, let's see if it works here. I can hear you, but I can't see you, Martin. Martin, maybe log out and log back in, my friend. So welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming back. Um, I, I'm mm -hmm. going to get the questions up because I see we've already got some questions going on. We've got some people saying hello. Um, Trevor is watching in Australia. Dougie Burrows. Dougie, we tried to get you on. Hello. Um, Nadine is saying ho, ho, ho. Kevin is saying hello to Santa. Colin Martin. Colin, you're commenting. How are you commenting? <laughs> Danny is that say Dennis is saying we're looking good. So everybody, welcome back, welcome back. Um, first thing is, have you all got a Christmas to drink? Cheers, everybody! Happy Christmas! Cheers! Cheers. Oh, Dennis, no drink. I'm the only no, one we've got. Okay. Good stuff. Right, let's get on with the questions. So, Phil. NSSA, since you last came and saw us, what have you been up to? Well, we've been running um, a national leagues system at local slopes in the UK, so trying to get kids racing. But um, whilst working within the ever-changing guidelines and moving goalposts of the rules in the UK, um, yeah, because we've I'll be honest with you, I've pretty much psychologically written off any kids coming out to the Alps this season from the UK. So we are we are looking at trying to keep them racing in the UK, keep the schools that kids active and keep things happening. It's uh it's been a challenge, but um we are continuing through this last term, with the exception of the the month long lockdown in November, but we did run some stuff in Wales and Scotland when that happened. And we will carry on after Christmas. I've got dates all lined up. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. We're trying to be agile. So when things change, we, we move. We try and run stuff where we can. As an example, yesterday, the announcement meant that we were supposed to be running some stuff in Llandudno in Wales today. That couldn't happen. But stuff we're running in Stoke is happening. We're trying to move stuff around when it gets sort of pushed out because of local lockdowns to other other regions other other areas within the uk um yeah I, I mean i'd love i'd love it if we could get people out to the alps but i'll be honest i'm quite skeptical skeptical that we'll get any kids out to the alps this season yeah sure sure obviously a lot of people who watch the the, the ski cast and, and watched your show are probably aware of people like Interski have cancelled the whole of the Chris uh, the whole of winter, which is yeah. a lot of school kids. And obviously, you're you're even though you're not Interski kids, you are English school kids. But you have been able to run some stuff on the dry slopes over the last couple of months, though. so that's been quite positive. Then, 
yeah quite a lot quite we've been able to run quite a lot there's we've got 40 kids at stoke this evening with uh four of our coaches there which is our last league event of of the year and then we've got a a training day later this week at Swaddling Coat in Derbyshire. Um, yeah, it's, it's we're able to to get some stuff going, but it's it's as I say, it's it's tough, and you know, there's a lot of hoops to jump through in order to make sure that that things can happen. Okay, good stuff. Cool, cool, good. Thanks for the update. So, yeah. Dave Burrows, our man from Switzerland, from Snow Pros. Here he is, Dave. Tell us a little update on what's happening in Switzerland. Are we? Are you staying open or are you not staying open? It's a good question that no one knows. Um, I've been skiing well, since, let me see, since about October, end of October for, for work that we've done. Um, you know, weekends on the glacier and stuff like that. And um, I suppose the more the more recent stuff is that there's a lot of talk here about, you know, case numbers, virus numbers, whatever. And um, it's tense across the country. So so you've got some ski areas, um, Canton of Winter, <laughs> Some of the other cantons have, have kind of shut their ski resorts over the Christmas period. But here in Valais, where I am, and Canton Vol, where we also work, there is, I mean, skiing is happening. Um, the population is, is you know, the population and people that are coming to skiing working really, really well together, you know, to try and keep it all going. So everyone's been really good about the whole mask thing. Everyone's kind of, you know, putting up with the kind of the extra cues and stuff like that. But once you're up and on the mountain, everything's kind of just normal and um it's been really really pleasant so we've been up here with a few groups i've actually uh i've actually um been working with phil on a few things so i've had the pleasure of skiing skiing with phil as well over over the last few weekends and um and yeah i mean you know he's also seen it in action you know like how how we can all keep it going um and now i think it's just a question of people kind of committing to that Cord. If we're saying that we were able to ski between say, October and, and now, then you know why can we not continue to do it if if, ever, if all the measures and stuff that we're doing are are um, you know are safe. So yeah, that's where we are really. It's it's all a little bit uncertain, and, and we'll know more in the next week or two. But I think it would be foolish now to shut everything down now that we've made such a big thing about being open. You know, to go back on ourselves, we've just put the country in a right mess. Okay, cool. Just one other one other question on that: Have they have they stopped flights from Great Britain, Switzerland, like everyone else at the moment? France, Belgium, Germany, Austria have done. That I do not know. Um, I've we've got. Well, I'm not really sure. My mother-in-law is coming tomorrow from Canada. Ah, okay. So I will That's let you know when we know whether she's managed to get on that flight or not. But yeah. I, I, I don't know anything about flights. Um, you know, the way that, that there's a list. So there's a list of countries that, that are not allowed to come into Switzerland. Um, and the UK is not on that list at, at the present time. OK, cool. Good stuff. Thanks, Dave. Uh, so this is it's not going to be totally covid led we've said this because we want to have a little bit of fun and the first bit of fun is is coming up now and this is uh fabi if you want to get involved with this my friend have you got something to drink with you i do my other good, good. so fabi i'm going to put myself on the large screen and what you need to do is you need to follow these plastic cups as I move them around, and then if you can guess which one the beer is underneath, you win the beer. Do you understand? Uh, okay, we'll try. <laughs> okay, so watch very carefully, Fabi. Where is the beer, Fabi? <laughs> um, ah, this is a tough one. I think on your, from your view, the left. This one? Yeah. Well done, mate. You've won the beer. Fantastic. Chin chin. <laughs> chin, chin. Good stuff. Chin chin. How about that? <laughs> there you go. Fabian and Steeple's just won himself a beer. Oh, we've all moved around on the screens. Look. Martin, come back in. I don't know why you left. He's gone again. Well, it doesn't look like we're getting any music unless one of you lot can sing. <laughs> Oh, Let's, everyone do it. Let's have a look at our questions. I think we've got a question for you, Melanie. So, Melanie, if uh, for those of you who don't know, is 
our uh, Olympic mogul skier, our Austrian champion, and she has recently been racing in Sweden and Finland. Here she is. Hello, Melanie. Hello. Um, how is the uh, how have the the World Cup races been going? Uh, I had a pretty tough time up there. It was uh, great that we could train and ski like every day. But yeah, I was struggling with some little things and I couldn't put my training runs into the competition. So the results were not like we hoped for, but I could uh, reach the first worker points and also increase my fist points for the upcoming season. So yeah, I can make a check on that and go further with a lot of training now and then focus on the rest of the season. Good stuff. Brilliant. Cool. I've been watching the videos and the Instagram posts um, and you've been hanging out with a lot of reindeers. Yeah, I love them and I can only see them up there in the north like every winter or autumn we go and yeah, just my favorite kind of animals and I cannot bring them here. Okay, because funny enough, Tre Trevor is asking, um, good to see you back from Scandinavia. What is your favorite Disney movie? Bizarre. <laughs> Uh, frozen, I'm guessing. And uh, when are you starting the reindeer farm? Yeah, I don't know when to start the reindeer farm. Like I said, I don't know how to bring all these creatures here. And lately I've also been visiting a moose farm. So, yeah, I want to have reindeers and mooses here in Austria. Quite not sure if they will even survive here. But, yeah, that would be a lot of fun <laughs> to bring them home. Okay, good stuff. There we go. A um, couple of other questions coming in for different people. Let's see what we got. Um, Scott. Uh, no, Dave. Hi, Dave. Oh, Dave. Someone for Dave. Hi, Dave. I'm in. He's there at the moment, too. Oh, there you go, Dave. All right. Maybe Good. maybe he wants Rock to buy on. you a beer. Who knows? I thought it, I thought it was going to be a yeah, question. Yeah, you have to find me first. Dave Burrows, a question for Melanie. What <laughs> sort of exercise well, are you doing to ensure that you are ski fit? Now, Dave's getting it. Oh, no, it's Douglas Burrow. Anyway, I'm getting all confused here. Douglas wants to know what exercise you're doing, Melanie. Yeah, I'm not doing that much during winter season as the main preparation is done. So during the ski season, competition time, I'm just trying to do a lot of stretching, mobilization to keep that body moving. And in summer, we are working a lot of strength, power training. I'm spending hours and days on the water ramp, doing some agility training, everything as mogul skiing. Yeah, it's a combination of skiing and acrobatics, and it takes a lot of skills. But yeah, during competition time, I'm just trying to recover as good as I can for the next day of skiing. Okay, Johnny Tash, our quiz master, who will be joining us very soon, is saying that every time I say good stuff, which I must be saying quite often, everybody has to drink. Um, I'm not sure about that, to be honest, Johnny. Not yet. It's a bit early. Now, Phil, we've got a question for you, mate. Where's Phil? Let's bring him back up. What's your favourite Christmas movie, Phil? <laughs> uh, probably Jim Carrey's The Grinch. The Grinch? I think, yeah. Good answer. And um, Dave Burrows, where is he? What 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 Hello. Christmas song? What Christmas song do you most dislike? Oh, oh, I don't know. I haven't got an answer for that. I could do Christmas movie if you want. Okay, what's your favourite Christmas movie? The, the only Christmas movie to watch is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, and that your. Is the single best Christmas movie ever. The one you dislike the most? Christmas film? Yeah. Oh, you got me there. don't know. Not Wizard sure. Of Oz? Wizard of Oz? <laughs> Is that a Christmas film? Well, it's always on at Christmas, isn't it? No. We were having this debate. What is it? What is a Christmas film? Is it a film that's on at Christmas, like Bugsy Malone, or is it a film that has to be about Christmas? Who really no, knows? Surely and I'm, I'm for Christmas, and I don't know. <laughs> Connie Martin, no, it's no. time to talk to our boot fitter from Solutions for Feet. Colin, I'm guessing you've got at least one funny Christmas story for us. I don't. Sorry, don't do Christmas. Don't do Christmas. Bores me. <laughs> 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 you don't do Christmas, it bores no, you. No, I try to avoid Christmas altogether, but yeah, Christmas parties are always good. 
Okay, so you like a Christmas party, but you don't like Christmas. We're not we're not allowed a Christmas party this year, so that's it. Christmas. So is... that's it. So Christmas is cancelled in the Colin Martin household. Christmas is cancelled in the whole of the UK, according to Boris. So we have to put up with these things. <laughs> But, but if you don't like Christmas, you can't be really annoyed that it's cancelled, huh? Well, you know, it's just a, it's just a nice meal and a good excuse to have a good glass of wine. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly the wrong person who asked that question to, eh? So, um, Fabi. <laughs> Fabi and Steeple, do you want to tell everybody about the turkey? Oh, the turkey... Yeah. What happened was, with the turkey, Fabi? Um, it was, well, how do I say it? Andy arrived at my house and it was still frozen. Well, shall I tell everybody what happened with the turkey, Fabi? Because obviously everybody knows Fabi is an extremely talented boot fitter. However, he's not very talented when it comes to the kitchen. And about five years ago, we were all set up to have a big turkey dinner that I was going to cook around Fabi's house. And I went in there in the morning of Christmas Eve and took out the turkey, big turkey we'd bought for five of us. And I put it in its sink to defrost. And I popped back at the end of the day and it hadn't defrost so much. So I filled the sink with water. And uh, what did you do, Fabi, when I said, when you get home after work, put the turkey back in the fridge? What did you do? Uh, did I put it back in the freezer? <laughs> Did he put it back in the freezer? He picked it up off the plate that it was submerged on, on top of in the sink. The turkey is now full of water. And yes, he puts it back in the freezer. So when well, I go around the next day to cook it, it was more frozen than it was when it was frozen. Well, but this was still the, the bad old times where we were drunk every day. So I can blame it on that. <laughs> so yeah, Fabian Steeple doesn't have to defrost the turkey. Right, Martin, it looks like you're back. Can we have I some up prey music, please? We can. Let's hope it works this time. And save tonight And fight the break of dawn Come tomorrow Tomorrow I'll be gone Save tonight And fight the break of dawn Come tomorrow Tomorrow I'll be gone Thank you, Martin. You did break up a little bit, but we got the idea. Well done, mate. That's it's good. not hard playing like the thousands of people on the internet, is it? Okay, yeah. so we're back. Um, anybody with a Christmas joke? I did ask you to prepare something. Hands up if you've got a Christmas joke. Colin's got a Christmas joke. He doesn't like Christmas, but he's got a Christmas joke. Here it comes. Okay, so guys, what side of the chicken are the most feathers on? Oh, it could be the turkey. What's like the turkey the most feather? We don't know, Colin. What side of the turkey has the most feathers? The outside. We fantastic. <laughs> That's a Christmas cracker joke. It's Matt, really Matt, our holiday rep from several seasons in France, Austria, and Japan. You must have a Christmas story for us. A funny story. Um. Ooh. Gosh. Um. Not necessarily funny. I got my skis stolen at Christmas, though, in Val Thorens. Pesky French people. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. French. How did that go down? Um, yeah, not very well in the end, actually. I, to, to a certain extent, it was my own fault because I did kind of leave them padlocked um, next to the season air bar and for one night. And I came back the next day and they were there. And it was sort of a two-day Christmas party so i thought it'd be safe to leave it for a second night padlocked outside this bar um highest pub in europe anyway came back on the third day when my hangover had sort of cured and um yeah they were gone is anybody surprised is anybody surprised dave burrows would you leave your your, your skis padlocked outside a bar for three days no, I probably wouldn't. I might have done in the old days, but uh, no, I, I, I. But no one still skis here in Switzerland. That just doesn't happen. I, I think that's a like a French phenomenon. You can leave whatever you want, wherever you want in Switzerland, and, and no one steals it. it I think everyone's happen. wealthy enough already that they don't need to uh, don't need to steal your stuff. Yeah, it happens quite a bit on the glacier in Capron in the pre-season when all the races are up there. Um, when all of the groups are up there, it happens quite a bit. But um, 
yeah, it's it's not ideal when people come along and they just swipe about 10, 12 pair of skis at a time. But yeah, I think you being um, a holiday rep and leaving your skis outside for three days is your own fault, Matt. Now, could you stand yeah. up and show us that lovely jumper you're wearing? Oh, it's a really strong jumper. That is a strong <laughs> jumper, isn't it? That is a very strong jumper. And um, I think somebody... Johnny done a gross. Oh, that's Johnny. I oh, will bring Johnny. We'll bring that back on in a minute, Rosie. I thought she was talking about you, Matt. That you've been up the gross clock with you. Um, Nikki, Fabby likes your turkey story, and Tayton has to be about Christmas. No debate. I'm not sure what he's talking about. The films. Oh, the films. Right. Ah, uh, okay. So he's basically saying a Christmas film has to be about Christmas, or it's not a Christmas film. Okay, we, we've got a lot of messages coming in, but not so many questions. Dave, I got Douglas is asking, question for Matt, where did you ski in Japan? Um, I did the season in Niseko, so that was on the north island of Hokkaido, um, which is about two hours' drive from Sapporo. Um, last year when I was there, they actually had their worst winter in about 30 years on record. And if anybody's actually followed Japan in the last couple of weeks, they've had an unbelievable start to their season. Um, there's some areas that have had up to 200 centimetres in the space of two days. So I am sort of very envious and jealous right now, but it's good that they've got a lot of snow to start with. Okay, Matt, he's also saying, oh, where's it going? Frog and roast beef, great pub. Was that the pub? That, that was the very pub. Uh, it's a great spot for live music and for the season airs. Really reasonable um, rate for drinks and good place for, you know, yeah, partying and, and food and live sport. And, yeah, that was the uh, the sad place where I lost my Nordica NDR 80s, I think they were, in my first season. Okay. And then Pete Horam, your story has hit a chord with some people, Matt. Pete Horam is saying... Is that what you told the insurance company, that you'd left them there for three days? <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, so truth be told, I went to the gendarmerie. No, hang on, hang on. You're about to, you're about to admit to insurance fraud, no? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I was that lazy and naive in my first season. I left it too late to claim on my insurance. Um yeah, that, that's a, it's a bad rookie error on my mistake. But I, within a few weeks, I went to the gendarmerie and got the report. But then I, I just sort of forgot about it. I sort of cracked on with my life and enjoying everything and just sort of enjoyed rental skis for the rest of the season. Good stuff. Cool. There you go. That answers everybody's questions. Right. So um, we are going to get ready to bring our game show contestants in. Um, I know a couple of you need to shoot off for your dinner and you've got some things to do, but I just want to say thanks for coming along. I think Phil and Dave are leaving us. So Phil, just before you go, um, give the NSA a bit of a plug. Tell everybody what it's about again. Cool. Well, the NSSA are an organization that try to increase participation in school snow sports or in snow sports via schools. We're using schools running races this Next year, we're going to be introducing freestyle and snowboarding as well. Um, and it's, it's using the school's pathway to get more people into the sport um, through races, through freestyle events, through instructor courses. Um, all the instructor stuff we do from 15, we're actually opening some new stuff from 14 in the new year. So it's, it's grabbing those kids that have got some interest in snow sports and trying to keep them interested and take them in different directions, whether it be competition, whether it be instructing, or whether it be freestyle. <clears throat> Good stuff. Brilliant. Thanks for taking part again tonight, Phil, and I will speak to you in the coming weeks, no doubt. Good luck with everything. Let's hope we get the kids out at some point, mm. um, and we will catch you on the other side. No problem. Good night. Have cheers, man. Um, Dave, before you go, cheers, Phil. Dave, before you go, how can people get in touch with you if they want to come and ski with you and your guys in Switzerland as you are open? What do they need to do? Uh, it's very decent of you. Um, if you need, uh, well, it, it's very simple. Um, our marketing is pretty good. So if you just Google Snow Pros Ski School, uh, you'll find it. It will come up. But uh, So I don't want to spend too much time plugging myself or, or my team. But um, uh, just to just to really say, you know, wishing you a Merry Christmas and you and all the guys on here. And I hope everyone gets 
back to some sort of semblance of normality fairly soon. We can all go skiing, we can all do, you know, so I set our boots and get back to competition, all that sort of thing. That uh, that is what we all really want to be doing, rather than worrying about you know viruses and stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Thank you, Dave. And um, for anyone else who is new to the ski cast and didn't see Dave's. Um, Sunday Ski Cast. Dave is the man behind the Ski Instructor Podcast, which again, if you just Google Ski Instructor Podcast, you will find it. Um, Dave interviews ski instructors from all around the world, and they tell their story um, about um, everything ski teacher related. So go and find that. Dave, thank you for coming and seeing us again, and I'll speak to you soon, mate. Have a very good Christmas, and hopefully your lifts keep on rolling. Thank you. See you later, everyone. Bye. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Dave. Bye. So, everybody else, we are going to bring in our contestants. I'm going to ask you to leave the studio. If the if the guests, um, the contestants would like to enter the studio, and then once we finish with the game show, if you guys all re-enter, Martin, you stay where you are. Mm -hmm. Colin, Melanie, Fabi, if you just want to leave the studio, and then we will get our competitors in, and we will get Johnny Tash in. Martin, do you want to play us a little tune while we wait? Oh, of course. Go for it. I'm a picker. I'm a grinner. I'm a lover. And I'm a sinner. I play my music in the sun. Cause I'm a joker. I'm a smoker. I'm a midnight choker. I get my loving on the run. Fantastic, Martin. Well done. Apres ski from the off-piste bar, Martin, in the house. What, what happened to Sam? He's cooking me dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. So we're just waiting for Johnny Tash, our quiz master, to uh, get into place. Matt Brammel, um, could, you, could you leave the studio, please, mate, and just watch on Facebook? Cheers, mate. Okay. Johnny Tash, can you wave when you are ready and I will bring you on? Oh, why is Martin on the screen? Hang on a second, folks. <laughs> Technical problems. No idea. <laughs> there he goes. Okay, Martin, you stay there. Okay, so I'm just going to bring on our quiz master for the evening, Johnny Tash. Hello, Johnny Tash. Getting in the swing of things there. As a, as a little leprechaun. Good evening, Johnny. Hello, hello. How are you Howdy. doing, mate? <laughs> All good here. Good stuff. So, good stuff. So we are about to start our Snow Camp Europe Christmas special game show. So hundreds upon hundreds of people entered to win a backpack full of ski kit that has been donated by all of the guests on tonight's show. We have got Snow Camp Europe merchandise. We've got socks from Gordon, who doesn't seem to have turned up. Um, we've also got T-shirts from Atomic Salomon. We've got drinks bottles. We've got um, gloves from Fisher Ski. We've got T-shirts from Fisher. We've got hats, beanies from uh, Martin at Off Peace Bar. We've got loads of stuff. Um, Melanie Meininger is also throwing in something special, which we will find out about later on. But Johnny is going to take over now. I'm going to bring on all of the uh, competitors who have all been asked to have paper and pen with them. And Johnny is going to take over and explain the rules of the game show and how it's all going to work. So I'm going to bring in the contestants, Johnny. First, we have John. Hello, John. Good evening. Good evening, Pete. Hello, Pete. Hi, Andy. How's it going? Good stuff, mate. You're looking very Christmassy there, mate. I've got the socks as well. Fantastic. <laughs> Keenan has got his Christmas hat on. Yes. Jim. Hello, Jim. Hi, oh, yeah. How are you doing? And Nick Crawley. So this is our lineup of contestants, Johnny. Uh, John has got his wife with him, but I've told him he's not allowed to... to let her help in any way. Okay, over to you, Johnny. So, hello, everybody. Uh, I can only see me, Andy. Should I be able to see everybody else? 
You can only see you, but before that happens, Johnny, before that happens, I just want to introduce everybody to this little thing, which is called the beer bell. I just want to show you what happens. <laughs> oh, they open it as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Cheers, everybody. Good luck. Cheers. Johnny, off you go. <laughs> right, okay. So I can actually see everybody then, all right? Um, no, it's okay I'll for now. To... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you some questions. All five of you are in to start with. I'm going to ask you four questions. Uh, and they're all A, B, C, or D answers. So I'm actually going to give you the correct answers. You've just got to work out which one is correct. Have you all got an A, B, and C D, which you can hold up to the camera. Can we have a test? Can everybody hold up an A? Yeah. Buddy, they've currently got paper and pen. They've not yet written anything on there. All right, okay. Well, it will help if you've got an A, B, C, and D written down. And then when I say the answer to one is whatever letter it is, then you'll you'll hold up. And Andy will keep the scores. You are the, uh, the trolley dolly, Andy. You're in charge of keeping the scores. Right, now I need to get a piece of paper. I forgot about that bit. Give me a second. Right. So you should have all have an A, B, a C, and a D. So when I'm going to ask four questions, but then when I've asked the four questions, I'll ask you all to hold up your answer to number one, and then I'll give the answer, and Andy will mark down who has got the correct answer. At the end of the four questions... Whoever has the two, whoever's the lowest score will be eliminated and we'll keep going until we're left with one person who will win all the goodies that Andy just mentioned. Does that make sense Johnny? to everybody? Yes. Johnny, just oh. one thing. Um, Nick, can, Nick Crawley, can you turn your microphone on? Yeah, done. That's it. Well done. Good stuff. Okay, Johnny? Yes. So does everybody understand the rules? I'm going to ask four questions. And then when I have asked the four, I will ask you all to hold up the answer to number one and number two, number three, number four. And Andy will make a note of who's got them right. And we'll eliminate two people at the end of those four questions. And then we'll go to sudden death until there is a winner. OK, question number one. How many guests have there been on the ski cast since it started? So season one and season two in effect. And the options are A, 10 people, B, 12 people, C, 14 people, or D, 16 people. How many do you think since it started? You've seen some of the people tonight. If you've been a regular watcher, if not, you've got to have a guest. A guess, sorry, a guess. Okay. In fact, we'll do the answers now. So hold up your answer. Andy, get ready to write down against your five people. So A, B, C, or D. 10, 12, 14, or 16. So, John, hold it up. Pete, hold it up. And Jim, hold up your answer. So the actual answer is 14. 14. So, we have four correct answers there. Andy, have you written that down? Just John P didn't get it. Okay, so John P. But you're still in it, John. It There's P. another three questions to go. All right. Question number two, regular viewers to the um, to Andy's ski cast, he does live videos almost every day with his dog. But what's Andy's dog called? Is it called A, Fred, B, Lollipop, C, Laura, or D, Snoopy? If you hand up, hold up your answer now, A, Fred, B, Lollipop, C, Laura, or D, Snoopy? Right, so John John P is saying C. The Pete is answer saying is B. The answer Nick is B, B lollipop. B, C. So <laughs> only what? Nick Crawley gets that one right. Well done, Nick Crawley. Wow, well, now Nick. you need to. We need, it's on Andy. The dog is actually the star of the show, not Andy. We're on the watch for the dog. Anyway, question question number three: How high is in metres is the top of Salzburg platform on the Kitsteinhorn Glacier. Is it A, 3,090 metres, B, 3,029 metres, C, 
3039 or D 3049? A, B, C or D? Make your guesses now. Jim. <laughs> and the answer is B. Everybody got that one right, Andy. A point for everybody. I think I think what we need to Before do, Johnny. To the last question, Andy. Mom, mom. Before, Johnny, can you hear me? Before we go into the last question, yes, go on, Andy. Yeah, Johnny, I think what we need to do is we need to ask them all to write them down and then do a three, two, one reveal. Because yeah. I have a, I have a feeling yeah. that one or two may be waiting to see what the others are writing down before writing their letter down. <laughs> so I think I think we okay, need to then write it down, hold it reveal. on, and then all yeah. at the same time reveal. Okay, we'll do that. So that is now the rules going forward. Andy, can we just have a recap on the scores before we ask the last question, please? Okay, so John P has got one. Pete has got two. Nick has got three. Jim has got two right. And Keenan has got two. So at the moment, Nick is winning, right. and then we have three yeah. people tied on two. And, they, right. and John's got one, hasn't it? Okay, yes. Right. So yeah. two people are going to be eliminated. The last question. How old was Andy when he first qualified as a ski instructor? Was he A, 17, B, 19, C, 21, or D, he hasn't actually ever qualified as a ski instructor and he's just blagging it? <laughs> so so we, we're, we're going to do the reveal. So write down can your you answer. Repeat, sorry, can you repeat and those I'm going to go. Can you, can you yeah, going to. So. How old was Andy when he first qualified as a ski instructor? A, 17 years old, B, 19 years old, C, 21 years old, or D, he's never qualified and he's just blagging it. Okay, so if you, if you, I'm going to do say three, two, one, and on one, if you real, reveal your answer, we'll see who got it right. So in three, two, one, reveal. Everybody at the same time, Jim. The answer is A, 17. Oh, yeah. John, John, I didn't see what you put. John, can you hold yours up again? And Pete? What is it? A B? B. Yeah, B, B for Pete. Okay. So, one... what was the correct okay. answer? <laughs> the correct answer yeah, was D. Really. I mean, the correct answer is A. <laughs> A is hey. the correct answer. Okay. So, so Keenan is now Keenan now has three points. Jim has three points. Nick has four points. Pete has three. Wrong. What did Nick put up? B. I'm Pete and B. And the answer was A. Oh, the answer's A. Oh, dear God. Seven, confused. Right, okay. Me. 17, yes? Yes. I know the That's number, Johnny. I don't me. know your letter. <clears throat> okay. So, Keenan has three. A. Jim has two. Nick has three. Pete has two. And John. Oh, John. Just one. So John, Pete, and Jim. Well, with John, John is on one, and Pete and Jim are on two. So John is eliminated, unfortunately. Thank you for taking part, John. Not your Good night luck, tonight. Thank you. Good luck, all. Thanks, John. Thank Sorry you, you didn't get any the... further. Keep keep watching. Keep liking, sharing, and commenting. And uh, please, if you could press leave the studio, and we'll see you another time, maybe. Well done, mate. Catch you all later. Bye. Thanks, John. So now I'm going to ask a question, Andy, for the two people on two points to decide okay, who stays so and who for, leaves. This is for Pete and for yeah. Jim. Okay. Okay. 
So, Pete and Jim, you're going to have to write an answer down this time. So, have your pen and oh. a blank piece of paper, and it's the nearest to the correct answer will go through. So, I'm going to ask you a question, and the question is, on a clear day from the top of the Kitschdeinhorn Glacier, you can see the Lake of Zellumsee. How deep is the lake at its deepest point in Zellumsee? Write down a number in metres. How deep is the lake of Zellumsee? Have a guess. Mm. So whoever is nearest will remain, and whoever is furthest away, unfortunately, will leave the competition at this point. Okay. Have you both written it down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll do a reveal on a three, two, one, one being the reveal. So <clears throat> reveal in three, two, one, reveal. And what's the answer? It's 96 at the top. And this is, and what's, I can't read that. Can you read it, Andy? I've got 96 from Pete. Ah, <laughs> uh, we got yeah. two thousand five hundred from Jim. <laughs> I think I'm taking it. <laughs> well, actually, actually, the two thousand five hundred meter lift. I like your thinking. However, That's a deep lake, the Jim. correct answer is six, <laughs> yeah. It's a deep bloody lake. The correct answer is sixty nine meters. So, <laughs> so you you are <laughs> with your two and a half thousand meters. Unfortunately, you are eliminated. And it. So, sorry, Jim, mate. You're, you're out of the competition. Well done. Thanks for taking part. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in confront sometime. Right. Cheers, mate. If you could press Indeed. leave the yeah. studio, yeah. that would be fantastic. Bye. Right. Thanks for playing along. Uh, okay, so we are left with Pete, Nick and Keenan. Am I saying it right, Keenan? Yep. Yeah, good. Okay. Let's go. How many points are they all on, Andy? Just oh, we need me. to carry over the points, do we? So Nick is on one, two, three. Keenan is on three. And obviously Pete is on three plus one. Does that count? Has he got four? No, we're all on three points now. So it's in effect we start again points. now. Then that's why I asked. Yeah, so we start okay. again. So this is sudden death now. Martin, are you ready to play a song? Martin's busy sure. eating. Martin. So Martin is going to play the intro to a song, and then I will give you four possible answers, and you have to tell me which song Martin is playing. If only one person gets this right, then that one person is the winner. If you all get it right, we'll all continue. If one gets it wrong, then that person is eliminated. Martin, it's over to you. Will you play it for us twice, please, Martin? For sure. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do it a second time just to make sure everybody's had a good listen? All right, goes like this. Good stuff. Fantastic. Thanks, Martin. Thank you, Martin. So name that tune. Is it A, Sweet Caroline, B, Sweet Child of Mine, C, Sweet Home Alabama, or D, Sweet Dreams? We'll do the reveal again. So if you've got your number in three, two, one, and reveal. As expected, everybody's put C. <laughs> Correct answer. So everybody is still in the game. Okay, let's make it a little bit more difficult. According to the official Zellumsee Caprun website, how many runs are listed on the Kitschdeinhorn Glacier? Now, I'm going to give you some clues. They classify a run, say, for example, run number one might have one A, one B, and one C. I'm including X routes, and I'm including the routes that connect two pieces together. So here are the possible answers. On the Kitschdeinhorn Glacier, are there A, 13 routes, B, 23 routes, C, 33 routes, or D, 43 routes. One of those is correct. Could you I'll just repeat, repeat them again. 
A, 13. 13, 1, 3. B, 2, 3, 23. C, 3, 3, 33. Or D, 4, 3, 43. According to the Kitchteinhorn website, Zellum's Air website, how many official routes uh, that you can ski on are there on the Kitchteinhorn Glacier? A, B, C, or D. I'm going to do a countdown, 3, 2, 1, and then if you reveal, so 3, 2, 1, reveal. Give me your answers all together, please. Oh, the actual answer is C, 33. Mm -hmm. So we have an outright winner, Andy. Ooh, Nick has won the Nick competition. Crawley. The Nick Crawley, let's see, hang on, let's see your happy face. Me. <laughs> well done, Nick. Just I stay there me. for me. Just stay there for me, Nick. Okay, Keenan. Sorry, my friend. Not this no time, problem. but thanks for taking part. Thanks for getting involved. Thank you. See you, see you next time, maybe. If you press yeah, leave yeah. studio. Unlucky Pete. Yeah, no, hard to buy because you spent a day with me on the glacier and you didn't listen to anything I said to you because I would have told you all them facts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to you, I won. Well done, mate. I'll, um, I'll catch you soon. All right, see you later, mate. Cheers. If you want to press leave studio. Oh. Yeah, no worries. And we'll, ju we'll just have a word with our winner. Where is it gone? I never Where's listened. Nick? Nick, well done. Thank you. I never listened to you, and I managed to get them right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you follow me everywhere and listen to everything I say. Uh, well done, mate. If you want to send me your address. No problem. Um, we will get everything sent out to you. It's going to arrive in different packages because it's coming from different places. Um, unless you're, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get it sent in, in bits and babs. But um, most of it will arrive in the new year. That's but, fine. Uh, no what you've got to do is once you've got it all, we need you to take a big uh, a photo with you and all of your goodies. No problem. It just won't be near a mountain this year, I don't think, at the moment. Uh, it doesn't seem to be that way, does it, mate? Not for you, anyway. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll pop you a message with all the stuff on. That's cool. Cheers. Well done, Nick. Thanks. If you could press leave studio, if all of our guests can re-enter the studio in the meantime, Martin, take it away. Because <laughs> you shook me all night long. Yeah, you shook me all night long. Thank you very much, Martin. Johnny Tash, Quizmaster Extraordinaire, thank you for helping out tonight. For anybody watching who wants to take part in a quiz, Johnny does a weekly quiz during lockdown from his apartment in Zalem Zay. It's Quiz Time with Johnny Tash. You can find it in Facebook. And when is the next quiz, Johnny? Uh, we're moving to Tuesday this week. Um, so it's Tuesday, half six uh, UK time, half seven Central European time. Brilliant. Good stuff. Thank you, Johnny, for taking part Thank tonight. You, um, if you could press leave studio, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers, bud. Bye for now. Bringing in all of our guests again. We are just waiting for Fabi to come back, and I think then that's everybody. So how did you enjoy that, folks? Well, you got to love a winner. Huh? Got to love a winner. I don't love a winner. How many of those questions do you think you would have got right, Melanie? Not a lot. So it was uh, really interesting to hear some new things. Good stuff. I, I was uh, betting you. wrong on this one when you got your ski instructor license. So <laughs> now it's good uh, to know that you have. A long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. And, and the funny thing is, if all goes to plan, to plan. if all goes to plan, <laughs> I will be skiing on the mountain I very first taught on, on Christmas Day, which will be 32 years to the day that I first skied on it, on, on this Christmas Day. There you go. Right, I think everybody is back. Did we have anyone else to come back? Martin is still here. Martin, stick around for some music. So, more questions. <coughs> Melanie Marlinger, Olympic mogul skier. On the top of your Christmas tree, an angel or a star? Star. A star. Matt, top of your Christmas tree, angel or a star? One minute, I'll tell you. <laughs> he doesn't know. We have a star. Colin Martin, no Christmas tree. 
No, no, there is a tree and it's a star. Fabio Stipo? Uh, it looks like a star. <laughs> it looks like a star. Yeah. I ch show you what we got on top of us. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> That like some that looks like something a doctor would use, no? <laughs> All I can say is the people in Steiermark are very strange. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Fabian Steeple, Christmas pudding or Christmas cake? Um, pudding. Christmas pudding, good stuff. Uh, <laughs> John is saying it's a plug of some sort. What kind of plug would it be, John? Okay, everybody who's watching, if you do have any questions for our guests, obviously we've got two of the best boot fitters in the world at your disposal. We've got an Olympic mogul skier, and we've got an ex-holiday rep who is trapped in England and a musician who owns three bars that are currently closed. So if you have any questions, <laughs> please put them in the comments, and we will try and answer them for you. But why I'm waiting for the questions to populate, I'm going to just show you a little magic trick. And I need you all to, to take part. So if everybody can please um, watch the screen, I will go full screen. It's a little one of my party tricks. If you've got a party trick, then please do let me know. So are we ready? Okay, everybody. As you will see, this pack of cards, all of the cards are different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the cards like this, okay? I'm going to go through them like this, and I want Colin Martin from Solutions for Feet to say stop. Are you ready, Colin? I will. Are you ready, Colin? Oh. You seem to be a bit slow, Colin. Are you ready, Colin? Let's try again. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a delay. Stop. You want me to stop there, Colin? Okay, look at this card. It doesn't matter if I see this card. Everybody look at this card. Can you all remember this card? Got it? I'm going to put it back on the deck. And I'm going to put the cards back on top. I'm going to just cut them once. I'm going to do this. Is this your card? It was your card, wasn't it? it was, now, that's, yeah. not that, that's not that impressive, is it? No. That's not that impressive. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take your card, this one, and it doesn't matter if I know your card. And I'm going to slide it into the deck here. Okay. I'm going to ring the beer bell. Because I don't need beer. I need more assistance. I'm going to wrap. Now, come back, come back, come back, come back. I'm going to wrap the cards in this napkin. I'm now going to ask the beer assistant to take the knife and to poke the knife into the deck of cards wherever they wish without stabbing my hand. Yeah, I'll try to not stab your hand. Okay, good stuff. So, I didn't do it, he did it. You can go now, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's your card again. How about that, folks? What? <laughs> <laughs> no! Really? That? Fair huh? play. That's good, don't it? And what watch me make this disappear. Are you ready? One, two, three. Gone. <laughs> there we go. I told you it would be a fun Christmas extravaganza. Martin, do you have a tune for us? To the Christmas song this time then. Yes, please. All right. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Thanks, Martin. Brilliant. I've just realized who Dougie Burrows is, who is asking all of the questions. Now, everybody, if I asked you, what are the two main ingredients in a banoffee pie? Colin, what would you say? Coffee and bananas. Matt, what would you say? Banana and coffee. Coffee? Banana Melanie? and coffee. Melanie? Melanie? Yeah, I don't know. Fabi? 
Toffee? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the two main ingredients in a banoffee pie are bananas and condensed milk, which which create toffee and banana. So toffee. <laughs> <laughs> I want. Um, uh, but by the way, 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 by the way. I am really, really shocked that people didn't get your dog's name right. I'm absolutely shocked. Yeah. Oh, really, they, should be, they should be banned from the Snow Camps Europe side. It's now. I, it I think what we worked out very early on is a couple of them were just chances and they were just writing down the letters that other people were writing down. And, um, and, my, and my wife is still cracking up that someone really thinks that the uh, Zeller Lake is 2,500 meters deep. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> would be a very deep lake. Wouldn't it? Would be a very deep lake, <laughs> right? Um, Christmas story, Melanie. Do you have anything for us? What? You know, normally, like this is now the first time again that I'm spending Christmas at home. Normally, I'm always been somewhere around the world. I remember I spent Christmas in China, Christmas in New Year in, in Seattle a few years ago. So. Nothing special happening as this uh, kind of celebration not going on anymore for a few years in skiing. So let's see so, what's coming so, up. This year. So this is an un this is an unusual Christmas for you. Yeah, it is. So what what would a normal Chris what would an Austrian Christmas be for an Austrian if they were in the country and not out skiing on moguls? I remember when I was little that uh, you were sitting together, coming together with your family, grandparents, sitting around, you were having like a dinner together. Then it's uh, like ringing a little bell, that means that the Chris is here and that the presents are already under the tree and then you are just really excited as a kid to run there, see what's under the tree for you. And you're just sitting together with your family, drinking, eating, having a good time. And good stuff. And what is what's this thing, this Krampus that goes on on the fifth of December? Um, yeah, we have uh, two different kind of uh, Krampus. We have these uh, kind of ugly ones, which are eating the people, and then we have these nice ones we call Schönpärchen. It's more a tradition that uh, yeah, that the new year is starting, that keeping the old things and habits away. So I also. Have in a Krampus for a lot of years, maybe this year I will see one and try again to run away. But nobody will catch me. <laughs> Obviously, again this year because of the COVID stuff, no Krampus in Austria. Um, good stuff. So Colin Martin is not a fan of Christmas, so uh, but he's having a drink. Fabi, you will be celebrating Christmas with your wife Janine and your son. Anything special planned? Um, no, I will be working. So the 24th is off, but on the 25th, I will be working. And uh, yeah, we do two Christmases, one on the 24th, like the European does it. And then on the 25th in the morning, we do another little thing for Wiley. So he gets both the excitements on the European and the English Christmas. Good stuff. Cool. And you are working up until when? Um, I'm working till 6 p.m. on the 25th and then probably start again on the 26th in the morning at 9 o'clock uh, on the phone or del delivering goods which people order via phone. We'll see. Not sure yet. Good stuff. Okay, obviously we are going into another lockdown so all of the shops have got to close. Colin Martin, opening yes, hours for the shop over Christmas? We are, well, officially we're open until uh, 5 o'clock on the 23rd, but... We're a tier two area and we are now pretty much surrounded by tier three and four. So we've got a very small window of clients that can come and see us right now. Okay, because you're, you're surrounded by what, Bar Berkshire's tier four, is that right? Yeah, Berkshire, Buckinghamshire is tier th uh, tier four. So that's basically to our, our south and east and to our west. So we have a kind of corridor which goes southwest. And a little bit northwest, so Hartford, uh, Herefordshire has got into tier one. So they're really good people, so they were allowed to come visit us. But uh, until we uh, we sort the COVID situation out, it's going to be very limited, uh, limited only. Okay, so for those people who can get to you, what do they need to do about making appointments for boots? 
If they send us an email via the website, www.solutions4feet4.com, and we can get them booked in. We've got a few of available this week, and then we've got between Christmas and New Year. Plenty of availability then. Good stuff. Cool. Matt Brammel, our holiday rep, who would normally be in the Alps, partying, no doubt. Um, what are you going to be up to? Uh, well, actually, right now, I'm, I'm actually working a little bit in the COVID test centres here in my county of Staffordshire. I got a, picked up a job, so I'm actually sort of working in it, but um, sort of praying in the new year that things become a little bit more clearer. Um, but yeah, for the time being, I'm sort of helping out in the test centres and, and making videos on my uh, channel, which is um, all about you know sort of covering life for seasonaires and yeah, giving giving voice to people that are involved in the industry. Good stuff. For those people who are regulars to the Sunday Ski Cash, you will know I uh, have my little saying. Um, stay positive, test negative. We have now got Sunday Ski Cast merchandise. If anyone would like to pick that up, then go to the Snow Camp Europe Facebook page and you will find a link where you can get that. Matt, if you think you could probably sell some of these in the test centre, that would be fantastic, as I am going to basically have no work for most of the summer. Um, Martin, fire up, that guitar and, fire up that guitar and give us a little tune, will you? I'm going to play your favourite song this time, Andy. Last Christmas, I put it in my heart, and the very next day, you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I gave it to someone special, and it rose. So last Christmas, I gave you my heart, but the very next day, you gave it away. But this year, to save me from tears, I save it to someone special, special. There you go, Andy. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Martin, from the office bar. So what's, what's the bars are going to be closed now until at least the 18th of January, correct? Yes, that's all we know for now. Okay. but And, and we hope that they can open on the 18th, and we hope that that will be without restrictions, right? Definitely so, yes. Okay, let's wait and see. And what are you, what are your Christmas plans? I'm going to go back to my home country of Sweden and celebrate with my mother and uh, eat a lot of Swedish Christmas food. And what will Sam be doing? Will he be coming with you as your traveling chef? I think he will uh, enjoy as much of the skiing as he can here in Austria, to be fair. Okay, because he thinks the lifts will stay open. Hmm, more for him. <laughs> okay, good stuff. We cool. hope. We hope. Right. So, everybody. It, it, <laughs> My beard's got in my mouth. It has come to that time of the night where we are almost done. There are no more questions coming in, but several of the guests are having a conversation with each other in the comments, which has been very confusing for me because I thought they were asking me questions, but they were asking each other questions. So Yushi, Dougie, and all of the others, Johnny, who are having that conversation, keep that going because it will do the Facebook algorithm no end of good. Um, but, uh, yeah, for this season of the Snow Camps Europe Sunday Ski Cast and for tonight's Christmas special, thank you to everybody who took part. Dave and Phil from earlier. Gordon is missing in action. We're not sure where he is. Let's hope he still gives us those seven pair of socks to give away. Um, but for those of you who are still here, Colin, thank you very much, mate. No worries, um, We'll catch you soon. Um, Matt, keep testing these people. Keep Thanks, the country mate. safe. Uh, Cheers, Fabi, mate. I will see you on Tuesday. Perfect. As I, am, I, am, I am popping by um, to do a few things in the area. Melanie, when are you next off, did you say? Uh, not sure yet. Uh, for now it's like the end of January. Like We're heading to the UK and Canada for the next World Cup competition. But till then, I think I'll spend the most time Number here, praying the lift will be open and we get some snow that I can train and prepare for the rest of the season. Okay, good stuff. Well, good luck with the training and the competitions as they come along, and good luck with the road to the Olympics. We will keep a very close contact with that. I'm sure we'll get you back on again for an update. Martin from Off Beast Bar, thank you for supplying the music. And yeah, see you all later. Thanks for taking part, folks. Um, if you want to all um, sit in the green room, I'll come and talk to you all in a second. So stay where you are.
there you go folks so that was our so camp sure ski cast christmas special uh just a little bit of light-hearted entertainment for you i broke out one of my legendary magic tricks as you saw fabian steeple won himself a beer how he knew it was under that plastic cup i do not know and obviously we caught up with dave from snow pros who gave us a bit of an update on the situation in switzerland and also phil from the national schools snow sports association who are doing great work with getting grassroots racing uh, kids into grassroots racing and getting them out to Italy to train. Obviously, Melanie Marlinger, our Olympian, is still training and competing, hoping to get to the Olympics. Matt Brammel, trapped in the UK, can't get out to the Alps to work as a um, holiday rep um, who left his skis outside a bar for three days. What a hangover that must have been. Fabian Codin, our boot fitters, didn't get to answer any boot fitting questions, which they're probably glad of, to be fair. Um, but they did give us a little bit of entertainment for sure, Fabi is not the man to leave a frozen turkey with. And it's good to know that Colin hates Christmas. Martin from Off Peace Bar, three bars, all currently closed. But when they open and when you can travel to Austria, if you are going to Salbach, Zalemzi or Caprun, pop in for some apres ski entertainment. Thank you to Johnny Tash, the legend from Zalemzi, also the man behind Crazy Daisy's social media, who have supplied one of our prizes for the competition. And to all of the people who entered the competition and to the finalists, well done to you. Well done to Nick, who won. And for this year, Andy from Snow Camps Europe saying, hit the like button, don't forget to share, comments, subscribe, and all that jazz. We'll do some more lives over the coming weeks, but the next ski cast will be in 2021. Look out for our Christmas Day address to the nation. Bye for now, everybody. Thanks for watching.